the story is called Cutting It Close. Uh, so when I was 20 years old, um, I had a drug problem, and I, you know, I don't really like to call it a drug problem. I like to call it more of a drug hobby. <laughs> um, I, you know, some people do yoga, or some people collect stamps or shit like that. I did a lot of cocaine on the weekends. <laughs> now, this was that part of my life, and it's not the part of my life now, and it never affected my rent, nor, nor did it affect my work. But I was just doing a lot of cocaine, so I was generally fucked up most of the time. Um, also, if there are children, I'm so sorry, there's going to be a lot of F-bombs. So, one particular weekend, my best friend who lived in Ottawa, her name's Dana, invited me up because it was her 21st birthday, and um, she just moved into a new place. So she wanted to have a housewarming kegger, and of course I was going to come up because, fuck, I just, I love to party and I love Ottawa. So I go up. I, I was 20. I was 20. So I, I, go up to, I, so I go up to Ottawa at around, I get there for around 6 o'clock, and I meet her, uh, her new roommate who happened to be a coke dealer. Yes, right, store. And um, so what we do is he had just gotten a, um, he just got a huge shipment of MDMA. So we did, we did a lot of that until about 7 o'clock in the morning. And the only reason I was able to fall asleep is because I chugged a bottle of NyQuil so I could get to sleep. This is, again, I'm not like that right now. So I, we wake up at 4.30 in the afternoon and we're like, fuck, we have this party that we have to go to. Or the, not that we have to go to, that, that's going to be in this house and nothing is ready. The keg's going to be there in about 45 minutes and nothing is set up. So I asked Dana what she wants me to do or Dana and Tyler, who was her roommate, and that's what, that's what they want me to do, and they say, can you just mop the floors? And so I say, sure, I will mop the kitchen floor. So I get, I get the mop, and I get the, bu and I get the bucket, and I fill it up with water, and I'm like, fuck, I just wanna die. <laughs> and it's, you know, and being a drug user, knowing this feeling of just wanting to die when you're coming down, you know, the only way to get over that is to really just get higher. So I went back to, I went to Tyler's room and I said, Tyler, can I have an eight ball of cocaine? So I bought the, I bought the, you know, I bought the eight ball and I brought it to the kitchen and I started snorting, which was amazing. I was fucking high and mopping the floors and I was, I looked at these floors and I said, fucking right. These are the best fucking floors that I have ever seen in my entire life. God, God himself could not clean these floors like I clean these floors. I had a bigger than Jesus moment. So the party starts and you know there's there's nitrous oxide in one room and people are smoking weed and I'm chain smoking the entire night and I am feeling very very good. I walk into the kitchen and Dana's boyfriend Dylan is speaking with one of Tyler's friends who is also a meth dealer. And Tyler walks in with this little silver tray of um, white powdery substance. And, you know, I, and he puts it down and goes, ladies first. Tyler, Tyler's a good guy like that. He, you know, he's a gentleman. <laughs> so, and so I say, Tyler, what, what is it? Is this heroin? Is this, is this coke? Is this oxy? What is this? And he said, I don't even know, dude. I don't even know. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. If I'm going out, I'm going out like a motherfucking rock star, and that shit is awesome. <laughs> So I, I do it and I feel like, you know, I you know, roll up the 20 and I snort it and I feel this amazing, amazing amount of euphoria. And then I start to feel myself move. I can't, or I can't feel myself, but I, I, I sort of see myself move. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And I realize that Dylan and the meth dealer are starting to fight. And I am actually in the middle of this fight. So then, all of a sudden, Dylan pulls out a knife. And I'm thinking to myself, why did he pull out a knife? <laughs> and then the meth dealer pulls out a knife. And two thoughts, two thoughts come to my head. Number one, I'm from Scarborough. Who the fuck uses knives anymore? <laughs> And number two, nobody better get blood on these floors if I can't. <laughs> so I push Dylan back, I, I may, I may, you know, I, I push Dylan back, and I grab the knife and I put it into my pocket. 
and then I'm, I'm, liter I'm, I'm, I'm literally standing in the middle of them in this weird Mexican standoff, and I'm holding both of them back, and I say, nobody better get blood on these motherfucking floors, do you hear me? And they both look at me, and I'm, I'm still pretty high, and I actually have no idea what's going on, but I just know that there will not be blood, there will not be blood on these floors. So I turn, I turn to the meth dealer, who still has his knife, and I say, Dude, I'm gonna call the cops if you don't put the knife away and walk out of here. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, and I've never questioned it, he listened to me. I then turn to Dylan, who is frothing at the mouth, because he's so pissed off. And he's trying to chase after the meth dealer, so the only possible, the only rational thing that I could do is punch Dylan in the face to stop him. And it was okay because I didn't really like Dylan that much, so I kind of felt good about punching him in the face. So I punch him, and I realized, okay, crisis averted. So the party goes on, and I actually, I completely, I completely forget that this, that this happened until the train ride home when I realized the severity of the situation. And then I realized, I have to stop doing drugs. <laughs> so, the, you know, I was, I, and I wasn't a good Samaritan. I was just high, and I didn't want blood to get on the floors. <laughs> Two years later, um, Dylan called me, or sorry, he didn't call me, he emailed me and, you know, thanked me for saving his life. And I just responded, I'm just happy there wasn't bloodshed, dot, 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 on the floors. <laughs> Thank you.